Hey, hope you're doing well. I'm okay, Kellen Knives here. Um, I wanted to share a little something I made that's uh, helping me make my slip joints that somebody might find beneficial. Um, here's a slip joint that's in process. It's got a rough ground uh, blade, um, rough scales, liners, springs. And part of the process when you make these, you have to put them together, take them apart. And of course the uh, slip joint, the spring is under tension. So you have to, um, take the tension off the spring to take them apart, put them together. Now there's a couple ways people do it. Some people put the blade in, the back pin, and then they compress the spring down to get the center pin in, or some people will put the spring in completely and then push up on the spring to insert the blade. And I've done it both ways. <clears throat> and the way I'm gonna do it now, I'm gonna show you is by putting the spring in completely, getting the other scale on, and there is a sixteenth of an inch or so um, tension on that spring that I have to uh, take off to be able to insert the blade. All right. Now what I've got here, piece of wood, it's got a piece of angle iron on it. It's got a toggle clamp. Now this is a 500 pound toggle clamp that is adjustable, which is important. And it's just mounted on this piece of wood here. Now, also I have a quarter inch piece of a uh, silicone. Um, you got to have some sort of soft jaw. Now this, um, of course this knife's not been finished yet, but you still don't want to, you know, dent it or or scratch it, especially when you get to the point where you are uh, putting together a, basically a finished knife. And then I've got a little piece of brass that I've milled. It's kind of a T. It's at a wedge shape. That wedge shape is so that when you get it into the knife, it's you got a, a level area to press against. And I've got my little block here. Now, what I've done is I've looked at how much space I have, how much I think I need to compress the spring, and that's where I've adjusted uh, this ram here. So the ram's already adjusted. And now it's locked in place. You can see that. Take my blade. I always go ahead and put a little oil. I've got my pin. And in case I needed more force, which I, I don't with this, but in case I needed more force, I've got a little uh, block of wood there with a hole in it that I can adjust the height on. In this case, just barely tap that in. And there we go, pins in. And now I can work with the knife. Now when I'm ready to remove the pin, same process, put in my little key. And you can see the wiggle on the blade, so the blade doesn't have any tension on it. Pins out, blades out. And there's a knife. So there's my little <clears throat> jig here. This isn't uh, <clears throat> my idea. I saw a video, I think it was Great Eastern Cutlery, and I really couldn't see their setup, but I could see they were using a toggle clamp. and I. Don't know how he was doing it, but he was using a toggle clamp to insert the blade. So I just kind of, in a sense, reverse engineered it, I guess you could say, and figured out how it would work for me. And there you go. There's my little jig for uh, um, putting together my slip joints and taking them apart as I work on them. So hopefully somebody will find that uh, beneficial. Um, I've used a drill press to do it. I've used a uh, bench vise to do it. I've even 
hammered them in using a one, two, three block. But uh, this gives me nice, repeatable results. Also, when I do it, once I get my tension right, that's locked into place. It's not going anywhere. And again, if I really needed to hammer on it, as far as hammering a pin in place, see, there's my block of wood. And I'm just adjusting the height. And now I've got a rest if I needed to, to kind of put a little more force in hammering that pin in, which I don't. So there you go. Hope you're all doing well. Phil Knives here. Take care. Stay safe.